you guys. Welcome to another in my Flickers of Fear horror movie review series. Today we're going to be talking about one which I've mentioned before on a couple of our uh, past live streams because I'd been wanting to see this for a long time. If you remember a while back, I think it was on one of our matinee shows, we had covered a 2020 movie called Possessor, which was directed by Brandon Cronenberg, a uh, son of David Cronenberg, obviously. And what I didn't realize when I first saw that movie was that uh, Possessor was actually Brandon Cronenberg's second movie and that he had made another one back in 2012, which was called Antiviral. So I went and uh, deliberately sought that one out because I wanted to review it for the series and see, uh, you know, what his debut feature was like. So I actually watched, I believe it's on Amazon Prime if you have a subscription. Um, I actually watched it on UK Shudder. Uh, so it's on there as well if you're in the UK or if you have a VPN and you can watch uh, Shudder in other countries, then you can watch it on there as well. So I will say from the outset, this is a fascinating movie. It's a, the look of it is just so awesome. It's, you can tell that a Cronenberg made this. It's not exactly like a David Cronenberg film. I mean, it's not like, you know, you could mistake one from the other, from the other, but they're definitely from the same family tree. They definitely have the same DNA. They seem to have the same obsessions, the same proclivities in their filmmaking. Antiviral is very much like an early David Cronenberg movie, but with its own kind of spin on it, like more kind of gloss on it. It essentially, it reminded me a little bit I will say from the outset too that it reminded me a little bit, it's, it's very much like a Black Mirror kind of episode. It's that kind of uh, premise. And I will say too that I didn't find the premise terribly believable, but it's almost kind of like it was done in a weird satirical way, although it's not funny. You know what I mean? Even in a Black... Because I feel like David Cronenberg's movies um, had a little bit of black humor to them or just a very dry, subtle kind of humor. This one, not so much. Um, it is very serious. If there was humor in it, I didn't pick it up. Know that going in, like I said, if you can buy into the premise, if you can suspend your disbelief, then this is actually a really, really awesome movie. It has like some awesome visuals. It's very queasy. Um, which I like. Like I said, there's a lot of body horror going on in this, very much like early David Cronenberg, but with kind of a different spin on it. So what we have is sometime in the near future or an alternate future, perhaps, their uh, society has got to a point where they are so obsessed with celebrities that people will pay to go to various clinics and get infected with minor diseases that the celebrity has. Not like, you know, cancer or anything like that, but because um, I think that one of the implications or one of the things they say in the film is that it's actually illegal to uh, give people fatal diseases uh, from the celebrity. So it's mostly just minor shit, like colds, flus, cold sores, herpes, that kind of stuff. So there are a subset of people who are so celebrity obsessed that they want to essentially have a disease that has infected the celebrity so they can feel closer to them. Um, so like I said, it's not, I don't know if something like that would ever get as widespread as it is in the movie. It's like, I could see it being a really little, like kind of weird niche fetish kind of thing. But the kind of thing where they, you know, it's portrayed in the movie where everybody knows about it, um, you know, that you can pay. And there's also another kind of side thing, too, of meat markets who take cells from celebrities and essentially grow steaks from them. So you can kind of eat the flesh of <laughs> the celebrity that you want. It's just kind of, kind of comes in these like beige slabs or whatever. So this is kind of where you come from. So we're following, our protagonist uh, is a guy named Sid Marsh, and he's played by Caleb Landry Jones. And he works for one of these clinics that injects people with celebrity diseases called the Lucas Clinic. Now, what he's been doing, I guess he's kind of one of their top salespeople because they show him, you know, at the job and like people come in and he's trying to like, you know, sell them on, very, you know, upsell them on various things. And it's like, these are you know, all the diseases that we have that belong to this person and that person. Interestingly, which I thought was like kind of an interesting commentary, was that a lot of the celebrities that they talk about, in particular Hannah Geist, who is kind of like supposedly like the most famous 
woman in the world, or at least in this part of the world. And she has an exclusive contract with the Lucas Clinic. So only they're allowed to sell her diseases to the public. That none of these celebrities, they never um, specify what they're famous for, which I thought was really kind of interesting. So it's almost kind of like, even though, like I said, the premise isn't hugely believable, but you can say like, even particularly nowadays with people that are like Instagram influencers and shit like that, you know, you know, or even going back a few years with people that were just kind of like famous for being famous, like they didn't, you know, they weren't singers or anything like that or movie stars. So it's kind of that kind of thing. They just leave it vague as to what these people are famous for. They're just famous because they're famous. And I think there's even uh, a line to that effect in the movie where he just says, well, everyone who's famous deserves to be famous because they're famous. And, you know, they're, they're talking too about, you know, the celebrity culture, you know, you can decry it all you want, but it's a participatory culture in that, you know, these people wouldn't be famous if people didn't give a shit about them and what they were doing and made them famous, essentially. So it's kind of a little bit that it's like I said, it's a little on the nose. Um, You know, it's not subtle, like in its messaging or anything. But, you know, that said, it's still a really, really good movie. So Sid Marsh, uh, you know, he works at this clinic. Now, not only is he one of their top salespeople, he also has a little sideline business selling some shit on the black market. Now, obviously, anytime there's a lucrative uh, trade like this in celebrity diseases, there's always going to be a black market. And particularly, there's a lot of black market kind of shit with uh, Hannah Geist because she um, will only let people from the Lucas Clinic, you know, sell her diseases. So, you know, other people want them, you know, they can get them cheaper in the black market or whatever. So what he's taken to doing is that he has, at some point in the past, has stolen this sort of console from his workplace. This console, he uses it because I guess when they when they go and get the virus from the celebrity, then they put like a copy protection on it to keep other um, clinics from taking it, but also to keep it from, like if you're infected with herpes, say, from your favorite celebrity, and it's like you don't want to pass it to somebody else. So they have it kind of genetically engineered so you don't, you know, so everyone doesn't get it. So it's kind of like an exclusivity sort of, uh, sort of thing. So, but he has stolen a, a console so he can essentially um, break the copy protection on the viruses and he can sell various diseases on the black market. And a lot of times he will transport them in his own body. So what he ends up doing is that there's another dude that works at the Lucas Clinic and his name is Derek. And he, I guess, has been doing the same thing like with the black market viruses and everything. And he gets caught, so he gets arrested. So that leads to Sid being sent to collect the latest virus that Hannah Geist, the most famous woman in the world, uh, has contracted. Now, so he goes and as he usually does, he collects uh, the virus for his uh, employer, just like he normally would, but he also injects himself with it so he can smuggle it out. Problem being that this particular virus is fatal. So at some point, uh, Hannah Geist dies and he is left to, uh, you know, deal with the fact that he now has a fatal uh, and quite horrible disease. And he's kind of trying to get rid of it. That's because, and it turns out later, like, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but it turns out later that it was like engineered. He can't break the copy protection on it. It breaks his console. So he has to kind of go down into these black market connections to try to find parts for the console so he can try and fix it or try to find a cure or something like that. So now, as I said, if you're really, really into early David Cronenberg, like really squicky, uh, queasy, like body horror kind of shit, then this is probably going to be your jam because it's very, very much like that. Um, I will say that if you do not like people being injected with needles, uh, this is definitely not the movie for you because there's a lot of that going on. And I mean, it's usually shown in like loving close up. Uh, you know, there's one scene near the end where somebody uh, inserts a hypodermic needle into someone's gums, like, you know, kind of sticking it out of their mouth. So it's, it's real, it's not super, super, I don't want to say it's not gory. It is gory, but it's not super over the top with the gore, but the gore that's there is real well done. It's really like skin crawling. Another thing that's really cool about it, I mean, the production desi design is gorgeous. This is a beautiful looking movie. Like I said, if you saw Possessor, that is also a beautiful looking movie. This one he really uh, does a good job of like contrasting 
this clinic and everything is just very sterile and very white. And even Caleb Landry Jones, the guy that plays Sid Marsh, he even has like his face is just so, you know, he's kind of, he's a ginger. So his face is just like very pale. He's just very pale and thin and sickly looking, you know, even before he contracts this, you know, fatal disease. And so just this whole thing is just looks very bloodless. And then when you do have like the gore and violence happen, it's a lot more shocking because there's just these big splashes of blood on these like really sterile um, clinical white backgrounds. So I think that was like a really, I mean, the look of this is just really, really cool. Like I said, conceptually, I like the concept. I just felt like the the concept wasn't super believable, but like I said, it's it's kind of in the vein of some of the set, like Black Mirror episodes, for example, and some of those weren't hugely believable either. So if you can kind of roll with that, then I think this was actually a really, really great movie. I do kind of feel like maybe it dragged a little bit, but I don't know. I did, maybe, I don't know. I've, I've watched it a couple times and it's like, I think I liked it better the second time because I was paying attention more. It's almost interesting because like the first part of it is almost like a psychological, I don't know if I want to say that because this isn't like a really character based, you don't get to know uh, Sid's character all that much. He's not super, super likable. He doesn't really talk all that much, um, you know, because he's engaged in some pretty like morally ambiguous shit. Um, you know, so he's not a good person. And like I said, you don't really get, he doesn't, he's not really humanized. Every This is a very, very cold, uh, distant sort of movie. So it does kind of keep the viewer at arm's length. But in a way, I kind of think that works. You know, that was something that some Cronenberg movies did as well, maybe. Um, although probably not as much as in this case. So, but the character is not really, the characters aren't really all that important. Uh, it's more about the concept I guess. You know what I'm saying? So so know that going into it too. But it's interesting because the first part of it is more concerned about kind of establishing the world, establishing, you know, what the characters are up to and what this society is like and kind of commenting on that. And then at the halfway point when Sid finds out that uh, the disease that he has uh, injected himself with is fatal, then it almost becomes kind of like a corporate spy thriller type of thing, which, like I said, that was a very David Cronenberg thing as well. He was very into, you know, corporate espionage and, uh, you know, just businessmen being th these evil, like amoral, you know, that would do like pretty much anything to make money, uh, you know, steal one another's ideas and shit like that. So it's very much in that vein. Uh, but it, yeah, so it almost goes into like a conspiracy thriller a little bit, like at the halfway point. Also want to give a shout out for uh, Malcolm McDowell showing up in this uh, near the end. I wasn't expecting that. So that was like a pretty cool little surprise. Uh, he actually, he's uh, Hannah Geis' doctor, I believe. And uh, he has like some skin grafts on his arm and it's like, it's just very weird. But like I said, if you're into body horror, if you're into, you know, David Cronenberg stuff, then definitely, definitely check this out. I think Possessor is a slightly better movie, but, you know, this one was actually for a debut feature. Uh, it's pretty ballsy. And um, even though, like I said, it's not the it's not the most believable premise, because as I said, e even if, you know, I guess we do have the technology to do this or almost uh, to that level. It's like, I'm not sure that it would become a widespread phenomenon, although there would be some weirdos that would do it like, hey, I want herpes from, you know, there's even one scene at the beginning where he's like, well, if we inject the herpes like on your mouth, like from this celebrity, you'll be like, she kissed you. And like, people are like, oh, you know what I mean? So it's, I know that there would be some weirdos that would do that because, you know, it's earth and humans are weird. But uh, I don't know if it would be like a a widespread phenomenon. But that said, I don't know. This is just, I, this was a really, really cool flick. Like I said, I think Possessor was slightly better and it, it explores some of the same themes, but this one is much, much more body horror, like much more visceral body horror in the sense that, you know, it's concerned with the intimacy of sharing a disease with someone. And I think Brandon Cronenberg even said that that's kind of where he got the idea from at first, because like he got this flu and he was sort of thinking about how strange it was that, you know, there was something there from another body that had passed to your body. And it was like, a you know, the physicality of it kind of fascinated him. And then he said that he saw, I think it was Sarah Michelle Gellar, 
like on a late show, like I think it was Jimmy Kimmel. And she said something about like, oh, I have a cold. And if I sneezed, I would infect the whole audience. And uh, like a bunch of people in the audience cheered like, woohoo, we want Sarah Michelle Keller's cold. So uh, that's kind of where the, the strain of the idea came from. It's like, yeah, there would be some weirdos that would deliberately infect themselves with like colds from celebrities just so they could feel closer to them in like some fucked up way. But uh, yeah, so maybe it's more believable than I'm giving it credit for. But yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's I believe it's on Amazon Prime in the US and the UK. It's on Shudder, at least it was as of this recording. So if you're into Cronenberg at all, if you want to see some, you know, queasy ass body horror and needle injections and skin grafts and all kind of crazy shit like that, then definitely, definitely check it out. It's a real good one. Uh, and that'll do it for this Flickers of Fear. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.